Tourism Business Council of South Africa has written an open letter to the head of the EU delegation requesting an urgent meeting. We speak now to Chifewa Chivengwa, Chief Executive Officer of TBCSA. Thank you very much, sir, for your time. So essentially what is captured in your letter? Yes, uh, we indeed wrote a letter to uh, the EU delegation, head of delegation here in South Africa, uh, to really request a meeting to discuss the current situation between South Africa and the EU countries. Uh, you will know that uh, when the UK put South Africa on the red list, the EU followed. Uh, and when, South when UK takes South Africa out of the red list, uh, the EU didn't follow. So we have a situation now whereby uh, the EU gives us around 685,000 tourists on a good year, uh, and now we don't have any travel happening between EU and South Africa, or the rules that have been put in inhibit travel. So we have written to uh, the head of the delegation to say we need to discuss the situation for, on a simple basis. Uh, we do have Om Omicron here in South Africa. It's there in the EU. It's in the USA. It's everywhere. Uh, and anyone can catch it, you know, in any of this country and any of these regions. So the fact that we are still, uh, we still have this restriction, uh, you know, it doesn't make any sense or scientific sense. And therefore, we need to lift the ban and we need to ensure that they, we restore travel between EU region and South Africa and the region as well. A country like Nigeria, for instance, making known its intention of reciprocating what the West had done to the continent, right? So in terms of banning um, or restricting flights from Canada, Britain, Argentina, uh, and Saudi Arabia, uh, what do you say to a thought that says, well, if we reciprocate, you know, as a continent, then perhaps something might be done? Um, I don't think so. Uh, you know, we need to look at our economic interests uh, and we need to look at our dependency. And if you look at tourism, uh, we, we are dependent on domestic tourism. That's first and foremost, contributes around 56% of the total spend. Uh, the second part of it, uh, the 44% come from uh, uh, international tourism, of which a majority of them come from the region. And those that spend the most come from outside of the African region. So it's important that we maintain those markets because we earn foreign money. It helps us with uh, uh, the, the deficit that we may have. Uh, and uh, it's important to, to have those uh, tourists coming into the country for the benefit of conservation and many other things you know, that we do here in South Africa. So to reciprocate and say, well, you know, we're going to do what you did to us, it will not be, we'll be shooting ourselves in, in the foot. Uh, it's, it, it's, it won't be to the best interest of tourism, our economy, the employment of our people. So it's important that we look at this carefully and we make sure that, uh, you know, the solution that we need to put together is a solution that open travel uh, between both regions. Uh, and I think that's most, more important than, uh, you know, banning, you know, other countries. It doesn't benefit us at all. It's easy to burn euros and dollars um, with some of our economies, right? Um, you talk about the importance of domestic tourism. Uh, just how accessible do you perceive that it is? I ask you this in boosting efforts to turn the tide. Well, you know, from the domestic point of view, I believe that uh, between 2020 and now, it has been very much accessible. The prices have uh, dropped because of supply and demand. Uh, especially on the high-end part of uh, tourism products. But we need to keep in mind that uh, even before then, uh, here in South Africa, we've got many products uh, from entry level, bed and breakfast, uh, guest houses, to the mid-level, to the high level, just the same way we have in the automotive sector, where you have uh, entry level to high end you know, type of uh, you know, vehicles. So we have the same within the tourism sector. So it's accessible, it depends on the budget, and uh, I must emphasize that uh, now because of the supply and demand and the lack of tourists coming from overseas, those high-end properties are available. They are priced in a way that uh, uh, South Africans can be able to go into those properties, enjoy them, and experience them. So I think that uh, at the moment, uh, it's a buyer's market, and uh, we, we want everyone to travel and enjoy their own country. Tourism Business Council of South Africa CEO, Mr. Chipiwa Chivengwa, thank you very much for your time.